Yeah, I say it's live. No. Okay, yeah, it's live. Okay. Um, Do you want me to be the group leader? Okay, yeah, you can be a good group leader. Okay. So I'm just going off of what it says on um, this page, the Google HOA session. Yeah. And it says, uh, use the following questions to guide your discussions. Ensure that every group member takes five to ten minutes on each, addressing all of the following questions. So we can just talk about each of our um, in interviews. So it says, briefly share some points of the interview. Don't disclose the names, but talk about who you talk to, their child or children, and what you found out. Um, so do you want to go first? Oh, okay, I'll go first. Okay. Okay. I talk to this family and then their child has a kind of speech impediment. Okay. Yeah, like he didn't start talking probably until the age around age three. And they say like okay, the family thinks like he he did talk when he start when he was young, but it seems like he lost his speech along the way. But oh. they yeah, so they but they didn't think like it was a big thing, like they didn't notice it. And one time they took the child to the pediatrician and mm -hmm. then, and as the pediatricians ask about, uh, about how the child is developing, like the language wise and <coughs> everything. And then they told the, predish, the pediatrician and then uh, that's when he said, by, by this age he's supposed to be saying this, many words words like this and this and this like and then they realize oh no it's like he's kind of like behind in speech and then how, how the old was he when they took him to the pediatrician at the age of two two oh, okay yeah and then the position is like yeah he's supposed to be talking like he's supposed to be talking sentences at the age of two and then the predecessions uh, decided to advise them to take the child to um, to be uh, for his ears to be checked to see like uh, to see if like he's not deaf. Mm. And then they took the child, and then when he came out, they found out that okay, he's okay, he can hear fine. And then after that, they they went to the the doctor, and the doctor told told them that they need to take the, the child, like um, enroll the child into a speech therapy. Okay. And then the child started uh, speech therapy. Yeah, they said that uh, at the age of two, the only ways that he could say like was like, no, like no to everything. <laughs> like, it's, I guess, no. And then when they enrolled uh, into speech therapy, okay, he started to improve and then he improved a lot but he was still behind compared to the children of his age right and and when it was time for kindergarten uh they went to register him for kindergarten i guess in kindergarten they have to kind of like do some tests to see where they are when it comes to reading and following rules and regulations mm -hmm. and everything and then he he wasn't cooperating at that year. Yeah, he was five, I think. And then they couldn't accept him in in kindergarten. And then they decided um, his parents decided to put him in preschool. And then yeah, they, they kind of like hold him back. He went to preschool. Oh, okay. And then the following year, that's when he went to kindergarten. And then. I mean, like in school now, like, like now he can talk, but he's not perfect, like in pronouncing some words. So uh -huh. he's still like, yeah, he's like, he still struggles with reading, but he has improved. He can read. Yeah, he still struggles with reading, maybe retaining the in, uh, like informations uh -huh. that, that they're teaching him. And so now he's in, like, now he's nine. Oh wow! And then yeah, and then even what fourth grade something like that. Yeah, he's, I think he's in fourth grade, and like in school, yeah. Um, 
uh, he does receive like um, extra help. Mm -hmm. Like they help him with speech therapy that he has to be pulled out of the class and then some teachers, they have to work one on one with mm -hmm. him. With others, like with other students too, because there's most students who are struggling in school too have the similar problems. Right. And then, like, yeah, and the school psychologist kind of like diagnosed him with um, learning disability. Oh, so, um, Holland yeah. just responded to me. Okay. Okay. Um, so my question for you is how do you know this family? How do I know? Um, they're like my neighbors. They're your neighbors. Oh, okay. Um, Holland said she'll get on in 15 minutes. She has to go get her baby. So we can talk mm -hmm. until she gets on. And okay. then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's interesting. So they were able to help him by taking him to speech therapy and then yep. that's really cool though because I wonder why he was delayed because if if it was like some sort of um, I don't know disability or something I feel like speech therapy wouldn't have helped as much but it seems like with what you said speech therapy helped a lot and now he's able to read and did you say he's up like as far as the other kids in his grade, or is he still well, he's a little kind of, bit behind? Yeah, he's a little bit behind. Just so I think like uh, he kind of like acts, let's say, as if like he's still seven, like six, seven, compared to the children of his age, like nine. Uh huh. Like they, yeah, they can tell like he's kind of like socially awkward. Oh okay. Yeah, but most of the kids that aren't kind of like. They don't see him being awkward because they're still young too to notice. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And they say like he doesn't give a personal space sometimes. Has he been there. like tested for other things? Do you know? Because I know that when it comes to, like socially awkward, there's Asperger's or autism or those type of things that contribute to that as well. Yeah, like I ask his parents. They said, like, uh, number one, their pediatrician said, like, he doesn't have ADD or he doesn't, he's, and then he does, he's not, uh, he doesn't have autism. Okay. And then talking to the speech therapy, and the speech therapy is like, there's no way that this kid ha has autism. To, he's a smart kid. Well, even, like, cool. even like in school, because they pull him out, like, they have to work with him. Uh huh. Um, they always give they like a good report, like he's a good kid, and then he behaves well, and hmm. like he's a hardworking kid. Like he really wants to work. Like he apply himself. Yeah. But yes, he has that problem. And I was talking to my husband. Like uh, he's a teacher. Hmm. And then he said, like, in school, yes, the students like that who need extra help, like, the others, like, you have to work with them, kind of, like, help them with, like, vi like visualization, like, kind of, like, they have to visualize things in order for them to, it make, to make sense to them. Mm -hmm. So as the teachers, you're going straight, let's say, just reading or reading or talking to them, like, they don't get it. Interesting. So that's why one-on-one... -on -one, and they like they need one on one help. Yeah, one on one help goes a long ways. Yeah. Huh. What does your husband teach? And what grade? Um, he teaches high school and then okay. he teaches bio uh, biology. Nice. Um yeah. Oh, there was something I was gonna ask you. Oh, do does this family have any other kids or is it just this one? Oh yes, they have other kids who like they excel in school, they're doing good. Interesting. In school. It's just him, like they have to work with him. Let's say they have to work with him when it comes to homework every mm -hmm. day and help with reading. And is it and they were saying like he was doing good in math, but the problems like when the, it comes to story problems, like that's when he has problems kind of like understanding. Yeah. What yeah. 
the all the instruction to follow. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but he loves doing his homework. Like he, when he comes um, from school, he knows uh, like he has to eat and then he has to do his homework. I don't know of any kid that loves to do their homework, so I guess that's a good thing. Yeah. Huh. That's cool. Um, so I chose to interview a family friend of ours that's been a really good family friend for years. And she's just a couple years older than me. And she has five kids, all under the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And um, none of her kids had d development delays or anything like that. But she talked about how each of them started developing at different ages. So, like, she said that some of them walked earlier than others and some of them talked earlier than others. And um, even though they didn't have, like, delays per se, each of them had their own different time frame. Does that make sense? Yep. And so I thought that was kind of interesting that like out of five kids she said that they all span from about seven months of when each of them started walking and talking and within that seven months all of them did but some were earlier than others and some were later than others. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah I didn't I didn't know anyone with children that have developmental or delays, so I just interviewed this mom. Um, so the next question says, after your interview, what is your sense of normal and what does normal mean? Can I go first on that one? Sure. Um, I'm not really sure what this question is looking for, but I would say that there is no normal. <laughs> I would say that, like, because we're all so different, like, we can't we can't put a normal on anyone like oh that child's normal you know like everyone has quirks everyone has differences everyone has weaknesses and strengths like uh, for me personally i wouldn't want to be said i'm like normal i i don't know i feel like normal is boring if anything and so when it comes to children all of them have very unique personalities and very uh, different perspectives on the world and they act very differently and I would say that none of them are like normal if anything normal would mean like a very like, healthy and they develop in a proper time frame that's what normal would be to me yeah I do agree with you yeah it'll be hard to just look at somebody and say that kid especially the kid and say that kid is normal that mm -hmm. one is not it's not normal because even the kid that I'm talking to you about, like uh -huh. another kid, I wouldn't have known that he has some problems because he, oh, really? he comes to me, he talks, like yeah, he talks normal unless if you kind of like you ask him like specific questions, mm -hmm. and then you can tell like he has to pause and think, you know, before he can answer. Yeah, we'll see. You. Yeah. That's a good point because with normal, they could be like normal on the outside, you know, but uh -huh. very different on the inside. Or they could be yep. normal on the inside and look very different on the outside. So it just depends on what everyone thinks normal is, I guess. Yeah, and I think that kids like different, develop like in a different way, like, um, and in different pace, like they take different like, pace. Like let's say. Mm -hmm, different he pace. might be yeah. He might be behind compared to his um, children of his own age, but he can catch up later in life as long as he's working, like he's um, getting the help that he needs. Because mm -hmm. I think like uh, if they didn't put him in speech therapy, probably he could have been like way worse. You know, he could yeah. Uh, he could have been still struggling with speaking. Right, yeah. because of speech that I've so I think like with the help like the kids can catch up <laughs> to where their peers are so I don't think like it's because like it's abnormal I think he's still a normal kid but he's just behind yeah and I think when it comes to normality in society we tend to judge harshly for people that we think aren't normal 
and That's true. it's not fair of us to to put that judgment on others because we don't know so the person that I interviewed talked about how one of her daughters has a very severely handicapped daughter who is in a wheelchair and has these disabilities and she also knew another girl who was very very wild and out of control and she didn't know why and then she talked to the parents and she found out that this little girl had suffered a really rare illness when she was yeah. two and she had to learn how to walk and talk again and yeah. so we never know the circumstances behind why what's going on and it's not our place to judge because we don't know why why it is the way it is yeah that's true and sometimes people can act differently mm -hmm. and then the minute you, uh, you take time to know them and work with them you can see like oh this person is not what i thought he was you know? exactly yeah those first first uh impressions aren't always true yeah and sometimes people are just putting on a show or trying to get attention or yeah that's, that's true, true. <laughs> so, Okay, um, so the next question says, did you find that the parents were often the last to know if there was a delay or problem with their child? And how did they come to that awareness? Did you get a sense of whether or not parents were re receptive to receiving services? So you were able to interview a parent that had a child with this uh, delay. Mm -hmm. So how would you say when you interviewed yeah. the parent? Yeah. Okay, they didn't they didn't think like um uh, uh, like he has the problem mm -hmm. to them because they have other kids and then they are like they're doing like well like playing with him and everything they didn't notice that until they came to the pediatrician and said for instance like he's supposed to be saying this much yeah and then that's when they tell us like, Oh my goodness, yeah, he's not talking much, especially even when he's around his peers. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so would you say that the parents were the last to know about the problem? Yeah, yeah, I'll say I'll say so. Yeah. Do you think yeah, especially if like they said they never had like they never had any problem with their other kids. Right. And then the other thing they said like this the doctor told them that sometimes um, when kids have like older siblings, older siblings, they do everything for them. They say if, if a child wants a cookie, he will just point at the cookie and then the uh -huh. will just give them a cookie. Like instead of like um, giving a, a child a chance to speak, to say like, I want a cookie. Yeah. Yeah, so hey guys, sorry, Mike. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, do you ask the question again <laughs> so she can know what we're talking about? Yeah, so, um, Holland, we're just going through the questions that uh, she asked us to talk about. So, real quick, if you want to tell us some highlights of your interview and after doing this interview, what your sense of normal is. Okay, so my interview was with. Um, my, they're basically my family. Uh, my family, they have a 10 year old boy with Down syndrome. Okay. His name's Glenn. Okay. And he is, I wish that everybody could meet him because he's, he's the funniest kid I've ever met in my entire life. And I think the reason why I don't see him as, um, yes, you want to join? Um, see him as somebody with, um, special needs is because of the way his family treats him. Like, he has the same exact discipline as all the other kids. He gets talked to exactly the same. And, like, the only thing that I notice different is the fact that he gets special needs treatment at school. Like, he has to go to speech therapy. He has to go to some of the special needs classes. But he's still in some normal Oh, and I can't. Oh, there we go. I couldn't hear you for a second. Oh, um, so yeah, so he gets, like, speech therapy, um, I actually don't even know if he's been in physical therapy, and, like, um, his parents just treat him completely normal, like, he knows 
And I think that's the reason why he's so high functioning is that oh, is that his parents treat him like all the other kids. And um, hi. Uh, what else? Let's see. I'm trying to think like what else I can brief about him. Um, he, as far as it concerns, like I know some of the questions addressed, like their walking, their oral, like their teeth and stuff, like. Obviously, like, he walks just fine. Like, Glenn, he's a big kid. Like, his dad is built really big. Like, they are thick-boned, big-muscled people. And so, like, that's kind of how Glenn is built. And so, like, his, he struts. He doesn't walk. He just struts. But I think that's because he tries to walk like a man. <laughs> and then his teeth, like, he does not have good teeth. And he hates the dentist. Like, he ha hates having people touch his mouth. Okay. He ends up biting the dentist, but, um, cool. yeah, so, uh, but, um, I mean, other than that, like, he's, he just is so normal to me because I grew up with him, and his parents treat him normal, but as far as normal is concerned, I don't even know if people can say normal because, like, the way Glenn's growing up, that's his normal, like, he does not look at his life. He does not look at other people and think like they're abnormal. You know, he thinks he's just like people that are that don't have any special needs. I think normal would honestly be your perception on life. Like it's normal to think like this is how my life is. It's normal to think I have a deficiency in my brain or. Uh, it's normal for me to, like, be autistic, like, whatever it may be, like, I don't think we can say there's a normal because there's enough percentages of people with special needs and enough percentage of people that don't have any special needs, so mm -hmm. I don't think we can really def define normal. That's kind of what we talked about. We said that, like, normal could mean anything, and it's, like you said, it's perspective, and so, like... We talked about how some kids could be normal on the outside, but not necessarily normal on the inside, or vice versa. And we talked right. about how it's not right of us to place that judgment of who's normal on other people because we don't know the circumstances behind what's going on. Yeah. And then same time, like people can look at us and say, "Oh, she's not normal." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true. Um, okay, perfect. Thanks for sharing that. The question we were just on is, did you find that the parents were often the last to know if there was a delay or problem with their child? And how did they come to that awareness? Also, did you get a sense of whether or not parents were receptive to receiving services? Okay, I was trying to answer that one when you came in, so I'll go first. Okay. Oh, oh she's gone. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm still... I'm still... Oh. I'm. Oh, you right. can hear? Okay, because I'm... Oh, okay. I'm just... You'll see me. I'm just right over the counter. Okay. Yeah, I was saying uh, that with the child that I interviewed the parents, um, for them, like, uh, their, okay, their, their child, were, uh, their, uh, the speech was delayed, but they didn't notice that, or they didn't seem like, they didn't see anything wrong with the child because the child was playing fine with the other kids and then he was playing fine with his siblings and then and one thing that the doctor told them is that um, sometimes when kids they have older siblings older siblings like they do everything for them they say if a child like needs a cookie he sees a cookie and needs a cookie, he'll just point, I want that, instead of expressing himself using words to do that. And maybe if, even when he's hungry, he'll just point for, uh, at what he wants. And then I think it was the same case with this child. His siblings were the ones uh, um, kind of like do things for him. And then the other thing, the kids when they're playing together, you, you don't listen that much. Like you don't pay attention to their speech, what they're saying. You just see them like playing, running around, and so like yeah, they didn't notice that he was uh, delayed in speech, that he was supposed to be saying this many words at that 
at that age. So until um, they took yeah, the child to the doctor and then and enrolled the child into speech therapy. Huh, interesting. It sounds like they were very receptive to receiving help okay. and they knew that it would it would help him, which is yeah. really good. I think, was it for this class that we had to watch a video about uh, these kids that have to get their left hemisphere of their brain taken out? I think uh, oh. last semester, I think. Yeah. I remember I watching that. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah, I think it's this class. That's true. Well, they have, so. like, learned how to speak all over again, and because they were, what were they having, like, seizures? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The brain plasticity. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something like, okay, these kids seem perfectly normal, but then they ended up having, like, a lot of seizures, and then they had to learn how to speak all over again. And these, that one kid was, like, 14 years old and had to learn how to speak again. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... That's the thing is that's why I think like we can't say normal because some people are born normal and then something happens and like then they have to like learn how to speak all over again, you know? Yeah. That makes sense. Um Okay, so Do I need to answer or did you already answer, Janessa? I couldn't find someone that um their kids had development delays so I just interviewed a family friend that has five kids and she just talked about how each of them was a uh, di different time frame of when they started walking and talking but none of them were actually like delayed it was just a space of seven months that um, one of them started earlier than the other and all of that so I couldn't find anyone that had actual delays but I would say that well, um, Portia and I talked about how parents do seem to kind of be the last to know that there's a delay with the child because when they take them to, what was it, the pediatrician, that's yeah. when they find out. Yeah. But um, what would your answer be? Mine is that, okay, with the example of Glenn, like, she was like, they didn't expect anything. Like, the whole pregnancy, she was like, Obviously, it's like she's perfectly healthy. Like they never detected anything on the with the baby, and then he was born, and she's like, she looks at him, and she's like, he has Down syndrome, and her husband was like, what? And she's like, this baby has Down syndrome. Like they refer to him as Glenn. They're like, Glenn has Down syndrome, and the doctors were like, no, he doesn't. Like he's perfectly fine. And her intuition, she's like. I know he has Down syndrome. And so they were like, okay. So like they ran tests and they like took a closer look at him and they're like, he does, he does have Down syndrome. So in this instance, I thought it was interesting because like usually the doctors are first to know everything, but like this time it was like the mother's intuition that she's like, I know there's something wrong with my baby and I want you to tell me and confirm that. Like, yeah. So flip situation. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting because kids with Down syndrome, you can tell their features and their yeah. face and, yeah. and their hands have one line, so I don't know how could the doctor miss that. Well, he was like, he, like, as a baby, like, as a newborn, you like you really couldn't tell that he had Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like, he was, he was like the perfect looking baby, seriously. But then it was like when he got around like four months old, you were like, oh yeah, he does have Down syndrome. Like you could see it in his eyes. And then, uh, uh, but I thought it was, well, she knew from then on, like since he had Down syndrome, that it was going to be really hard. So like she knew that like he was going to have to like have special medical treatment and that he was going to have to be put in special classes and take special medicine and like just go through a lot of different things so it wasn't that they found it out late they found out early and could prepare more huh. yeah that's a good way to put it yeah um, okay so the last question is 
Did you get a sense that the parents were uncomfortable or had a sense of denial, shame, embarrassment related to their child's special needs? Or did they feel a sense of resolution or acceptance and had a long-term plan for dealing with their child's needs? Um, for me, I'll say, like, uh, they kind of, like, accepted the child, like, it's not in an embarrassment. They do understand that the child has some problems. And then... And as as parents, they're doing their best to get the child all the help he needs. Mm -hmm. He goes to speech therapy, and then he's getting. Um, and he also has speech therapy in school, and mm -hmm. then yeah, and then he has teachers who work with him in school, where like they put him out of class and work with him like one one on one. And yeah. then even the parents, when he comes back from school, they help him with his homework, kind of like <laughs> to teach him because they know like that he, str he struggles. Yeah, that's good. I think that yeah. that's. I think it's good when parents are not in the and they just like, accept it. They. I think with with us, like we understand that God has a plan, obviously, and so it makes it a little bit easier to accept that, like. You know, yeah. we were given this child for a reason, but I think it would make it a lot more difficult as a parent if you are ashamed or embarrassed of your child yeah. with with disabilities. Like, I don't know. I feel like it would be anyways. Yeah, especially if, and the other thing you have to have a patience with that child. Yeah, too. tons of like, patience. Yeah, be tolerant. You have to have patience with children. Period. So to add disabilities would make it that much harder. Yep. I know that, like, with my friend's mom, like, she wouldn't change anything. Like, she yeah. has, like, oh, yeah, it's been stressful because they had another baby after him. But, like, she wouldn't change it or trade it for the world. Like, the only thing that's, like, embarrassing or hard is that, like, <laughs> he is so funny. He just kind of, like, he doesn't like realize like what's socially appropriate. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so like one time at the airport, he you know how like okay, I'm sorry, do you want down? One time at the airport, he jumped on those little conveyor belt things that like the bags go on. And so he jumped on it and was riding it and <laughs> Like trying to get him off of it, and like his mom runs through a group of nuns, and it's like, I'm sorry, and all the nuns are like, Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's funny. Another time, when they up from the airport, um, you know how there's that, there's that part in the airport where like people coming off the plane, like they cross through that security line, but other people are not cross over it, and like if they do, like alarms go off. Yeah. Glenn totally, like, he saw me coming down the lane, the tunnel, and he ran through the security and, like, started running towards me, and all these security people are like, hey, 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 hey. And so I had to run to catch him, like, so he didn't get too far to me. And I was like, it's okay, he's just coming to get me. And, like, they got a good laugh out of it. But it's just things like that that's, like, embarrassing that, like, most children yeah. do anyway, regardless yeah. if they have special needs <laughs> but, at, but at the same time, like, boys can act like that. Even a normal kid, like, <laughs> they want kind of like a high bar, like, they become curious yeah. about yeah. things. Oh, it's so but true. I have a son who's, like, curious about everything. Like, he'll just take off. Or, <laughs> like, I have a, yeah, my son, like, one time at church, like, it was during the week. He turned, uh, he went and, like, um, turned on the the alarm system. Oh my goodness. Yeah, those things like they were ringing like crazy and then... <laughs> How old is he? Um, is a boy, like he was around four I think. Okay. Three, four. Yeah, he went, yeah, turn on those alarm system. The whole church, those alarm system, they were like, they were like ringing like crazy <laughs> and then you can't turn them off, you have to called the fire department to come oh, wow. and turn them off. <laughs> so, 
that's fine. Yeah, we have to call the fire department, and the fire department uh -huh. are, they're coming with like police, oh, yeah. like a police um, yeah. ambulance, yeah. like yeah. <laughs> And then when they get there, they try to turn them off, and they're like, oh, we need somebody in a church who has the special key for this room, and then we don't know that person. That's yeah, so kind of like calling the bishop and trying to find out that person is in other world. Yeah, so I know, like, boys can be like that, like, yeah, my son kids is way, general, like, curious. Yeah. Kids in general are just so entertaining. They're so funny, and they do the yeah. weirdest things. Yeah, so you can't say like that. No, they're not normal. Or they're normal. Yeah. That is why it's like. <laughs> That's funny, huh? Boys are funny. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, boy. Yeah, that one's gonna keep you busy too. <laughs> yeah. How old is he, Holland? He's ten months old. Ten months. He's cute. Good. He's a little stinker, is what he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the questions. Did you guys have anything else? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. so, so. I haven't checked. Like, do we have to post this link somewhere, or how do we turn our stuff in? I will post it because I'm the one recording it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so obviously, like we already turned in our interviews yesterday. Is there anything else we have to do for the group, or is it just the one person turning in the link? I think it's just turning in the link. Yeah, just one person. The group leader has to turn on the link. Okay. So is this our group for the rest of the semester, right? And yeah, she, I think so. Yeah, if she changes it again, I think so, because we had like the first group for six weeks, right? So yeah. it should be this group for the last six weeks, seven weeks, whatever. Okay. Perfect. Is it just us three? No, we no. have Claire Hughes, but I don't know where she is. I invited her, but I don't know where she is. Yeah. Okay, did she comment on the discussion board? Yeah. Yeah, she's the one who started uh, with the new thread, but she didn't post her email, like her Google email account. So okay, yeah. And then I sent an email last night, so to BYU. Okay. So I tried. We tried, huh? Yeah. Next time we'll probably get a hold of each other a little bit earlier in the week, yeah. so that we can make sure everyone is aware. Yeah. So, and next time, so Holland, where do you live? Well, I'm in California right now. Oh, okay, so that's why you're like, oh, I'm an hour behind. <laughs> I was like thinking, oh yeah, I like totally have enough time, and then I was like, gosh dang it, I forgot that it's Mountain Standard Time. Yeah, same with me. Like I'm in Yuma. Uh, I'm in Arizona. So it's yeah. uh, um, like for me, it starts at nine. <laughs> Our group discuss starts at nine. Oh wow. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <sighs> All so right. where are you, Janice? I'm in Provo. Oh, Provo. Okay. Oh, cool. Yep. And I just got back from Hawaii yesterday, so I have a lot to catch up on. Oh, so. nice, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, okay, I'm going to stop the broadcast, and I will post this when it comes to my YouTube account, okay? Okay, yeah. Thank you very much, Kira. Okay. Bye. You're Bye. Nice. Thank you.